So I don't know if I've ever told you guys this, but I'm a huge fan of indie games. I love games that are creative, that try and do something different than what your average big budget AAA blockbuster does. And indie games have a tendency to do that. This one in particular. Today we're looking at a game with a really clever concept and a pretty unique conception. What game am I talking about? IDARB. So, what kind of a game is IDARB? And more importantly, what kind of a name is IDARB? IDARB stands for It Draws a Red Box, which actually comes from early in the game's development. See, the game was created by Mike Mika of Other Ocean Games. They're not a very big company. Mike Mika is probably best known as the guy who hacked Donkey Kong so his daughter could play as Pauline instead of Mario. And he posted on his Twitter feed one day about a little prototype for a game he had that drew a red box. It didn't get much attention at first until Tim Schafer retweeted about it. Suddenly this thing exploded. It was all over the internet. And ideas started pouring in from people about where this red box game could go, what it could be about. Some of them were joking in internet fashion, as you tend to do, but some of them were serious, and some of them were actually good ideas. And so Mike Mika took them, he implemented them into his game, and he would post updates on Twitter about how it was going, and more people would send him ideas. And eventually, we got IDARB. It draws a red box. This is a really great way to develop things, and I am a little interested to see if, if more studios will do something like this, because it essentially allows the people that are going to become your player base to have a hand in development. The fans get to decide what's going to be in the game because the fans are helping to make the game. But that's all well and good, but it doesn't really tell you much about what IDARB is or why you should play it. So what kind of game is IDARB? How does it play? At its core, IDARB is mostly just a 2D side-scrolling sports game. It plays out almost like a mashup between NBA Jam and Super Smash Bros. See, players are split into two teams of up to four players. The game has a maximum of eight players. And you're set on this little square 2D playing field, and there's a goal at either end, a ball in the middle, have at it. You score points by getting it into the other team's goal, obviously. And of course, you can steal the ball from other players, you can pass it to other players on your team, like you can in any other sports game. Woo! What's so great about that, you might be wondering. Well, that's not what's so great about IDARB. What's so great about IDARB is a little concept that they call hash bombs, which is the best integration of social media I've ever seen in a video game. What hash bombs essentially are is they allow people to interact with your game, either via a live Twitter feed or by tweeting in to the unique hashtag assigned to your game at the very beginning of the game. Basically, what these hash bombs let people do is mess with your game in some spectacular ways. You can tweet in all sorts of things that will have different effects on the game, from blacking out the screen for a few seconds, to turning all the ground into Minecraft tiles for some reason, to one that causes a little face to pop up on the screen and make a loud noise all jump scare style, to my personal favorite, which causes a little 8-bit Rick Astley to dance across the screen while a chiptune version of Never Gonna Give You Up plays, so that you can rickroll people while you're shooting the ball into their goal, which is a beautiful thing. It really is. These are a really clever way to integrate social media into a game beyond just the usual, you know, activity feeds where you can share your clips with your friends because you're super cool and you got the 360 no scope and you're super cool. It's more than that. It allows social media to actually become a central part of the game. And I also think this is going to be an amazing game for live streamers because of the Twitch integration. It allows the people watching your stream to directly interact with your game as you're playing it, which is just brilliant. 
the hash the hash bombs are really an amazing idea, and they take what would otherwise be a fun but basic 2D sports game and really turns it on its head and just makes it this wild, chaotic, frenzied mess of of stuff happening, which doesn't sound good, but it is. It's when you get a good game going with full lobbies of four-on-four four players with, with hash bombs going on and just stuff is flying all over and the screen is blacking out and Rick Astley's dancing around like that, I'm sorry. It's just, it's just amazing. It's a ridiculous, chaotic experience and it's just a ton of fun. But me sitting here talking about it doesn't really give you the best idea of what this game is really like. So we're going to turn the Xbox One on here and take a look at the game in action so you can really get a feel for what this game plays like. Alright, so here we are at the main menu, and I'll give you a brief rundown of it, but it's mostly self-explanatory. Online and local play are exactly what they sound like. Uh, and here in the broadcast section, you basically get you know, their news feed and an FAQ, which is helpful. Uh, you've got teams and tools where you go to customize your characters and your logo and a song that can play at the background of your victory screen. Uh, you've got the almanac here, which is basically, you know, recipes, achievements, and the credits. And then options is where the options are, obviously, and this is where you'll go to enable or disable a Twitch feed, a Twitter interaction, automated hash bombs, which I've got on for the purposes of this review, which will basically have the game just randomly spew out a hash bomb at you every X amount of time. Uh, yeah, and that's pretty much all there is to this, so now we're going to go into an online match and search for a game of matchmaking. Now, this is my one gripe with the game's multiplayer aspect, is that it's based around, essentially, couches. So basically, if you've got two controllers active in a couch together playing a game, it will only match you up with another team of two or another team of one if you're playing by yourself like I am. It won't dump you in a game with seven other players and then just randomly split you up into two teams of four, which is disappointing. But this is still fun. So here we are, we're gonna pick a character. I'm gonna be this weird alien. Come on, dude, come on, jump with me. Jump with, he's not gonna jump with me. He's jumping with me, there we go. Congratulations, Tyler, on slaying everyone you've come up against. Am I playing against Tyler? Okay, good, no. Alright, so now I'm going to show you, obviously, how the game plays, and hope that I don't do too terribly at it. Alright. So here we've got it. A is jump, obviously. You can tap A to do a double jump. The goal for me, since I was on the left, I've got to stole the ball. Nice. I've got to get it into this goal here on the right, obviously, since I was left team. When you don't have the la lag, wonderful. When you don't have the ball, you can press X to do this little blaster thing, which will basically let you steal it. All right. And this water you're seeing right now is one of the automated hash bombs that I've had turned on. That's one of the effects you can get, is it'll fill up with water. I keep hoping that we'll get a hashtag Ricky and get a wonderful 8-bit Rick roll, because those are beautiful, guys. They really are. Get back here. That is mine. All right. Idar, will you stop watering us? The penalty box, magnificent. This is gonna be interesting.
Well, I'm not entirely sure what the penalty box does, actually. Alright, so it's tied right now. And the game is split up into, I believe, four rounds of about a minute and a half or two minutes apiece. Dang it. There we go. Here we've got the lights hash bomb, which does this, which, you know, obviously I'm not very good at. Basically, it turns all the lighting off and then makes a light appear around the ball so that only the person with the ball can actually, you know, see where they're going. And just little things like that, it just adds an element of randomness to the game, which is really a lot of fun, and now we all have explosive-like diarrhea. Thank you, Idar. That's a sentence I never thought I would say. Alright. So the game is tied right now. Oh, hello. Get out of my... What the... Oh, this is the puke train hash, hash bomb, excuse me. I haven't gotten this. This is, oh, this is disorienting. My god, that is, that is. <laughs> excuse me, sorry about it. Give me that back. Oh, great, that's the dizzy hash bomb, apparently. Reverses movement, that is going to be difficult to get used to. Oh, dear lord, I can't do that. Oh, wait, no, it's all back. He's beating me. This I cannot allow. Oh, Lord. Okay. It turned into a bomb there for a minute. That's another hash bomb. I got this. Yes! Ah, uh, we're in the penalty box. Darn it. Another one of the things I love about this game so much is like the random commentary that'll happen when you're... Here we get one of the halftime minigames. Sorry to interrupt my own train of thought there. I have absolutely no idea how this minigame works, though. It... Oh, I just figured it out! I just figured it out! Oh, I just died. Never mind. I guess I didn't figure it out. Oh, hello down here. So as you can see down at the bottom the whole time, we've had a Twitter feed scrolling down there with people's comments about not necessarily our game in particular, but just iDarb as a game. Give me that back! Sorry. I got instant replay. Not quite sure what this love hash bomb does yet, though. No, you don't. He's beating me by one. One. Oh, great. We're getting the disorienting one again. Oh, that is, that is, that is giving me a headache. Ah, that is just... Definitely variety there. <sighs> oh, I haven't run into this one. We've got a hash bomb that draws a red box, just like the name. Are we going to get an oh, hi, Mark? from the commentator. I got one of those ones, and I thought that was amazing. Penalty. What? Sweet. Is that... What? What did I do? Why am I in the penalty box? And also, I darb activated lasers. I'm a fire in my laser. <sighs> I'm sorry for that. I don't know what I was just doing. Activated freeze ball. Magnificent. Don't you dare. I will freeze ball your face off. 
Oh! Okay. I can't do a barrel roll! I am losing so bad. Alright, I'm a red box. I can do this. I'm a magical red box. Alright. I'm not doing so well here. Now I do feel the need to great. Here go the lights. Good. All right. I got the ball. I can see. He can only see what I can. Oh, you gotta be kidding me! I do feel the need to mention that uh, the Twitter functionality for iDarb has been kind of hit or miss recently. It's been down a little bit. Here's the magic hash bomb, which, you know, is pretty self-explanatory. So yeah, the Twitter functionality has been a little hit or miss recently. I do need to let you guys know that, but to the best of my knowledge, it's working as of right now. Though I could be wrong about that. Alright, well, this is embarrassingly bad, and I don't think we're going to get a Rickroll in this one. And then here's the wonderful, when you lose, you can mash A to cry fountains of tears, and it's, the game's hilarious. I wish the guy could, I wish I could have done good enough to get the guy to rage quit. This game has a beautiful rage quit screen that I am probably displaying on the screen right now for you. It's, it's amazing. I might not be, I don't know. And that's pretty much iDarb in a nutshell. Sure, the game isn't going to change your life or anything. It's not going to make you a better person by playing iDarb. But it is a chaotic, creative, and above all, fun experience that doesn't really play like anything else out there. The hash bombs give it a really fun sense of randomness to the whole thing that elevates it beyond just being a simple little game and into something that's really amazing and a lot of fun. It's not a life-changing experience, but if you're interested, I highly recommend that you give iDarb a chance. It is absolutely worth your time. iDarb gets an official score of a 9 out of 10. Give it a shot. Absolutely. You won't be disappointed. Well, that's all for this episode. I hope you guys enjoyed. Hopefully this might convince some of you to give this game a chance because you should. It deserves your time and your money. It's a great game. But yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, you know, as always, likes and shares are very much appreciated. And subscribing if you really enjoyed it. You don't have to, but, you know, obviously that would be very much appreciated. And yeah. Thanks for watching. I will see you guys in the next video, hopefully very soon. Bye, guys.